Now we want to start off this evening with the life of the next greatest to tread the earth after Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an, and he was none other than Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. I want to make mention of a very few points, very few points, inshallah, before we close for today, so that tomorrow we can look forward to the life of this great warrior. He was a man who was feared. He was 13 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember this. So when prophethood was granted to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar ibn al-Khattab was only 27 years old. He was young. He was feared. He was known as the ambassador of Quraysh. He was sent to other places to give the message of Quraysh across to other regions and other parts of the peninsula. And whenever there were difficulties and problems and the position of Quraysh had to be explained, they sent Umar. He was a strong man, powerful. He was well spoken and very, very feared. And he was a, as a young man, he had a very, very, a very, in fact, a life that was full of what I would term today, the fast lane. You know, today, if you say someone is on the fast lane, what does that mean? I had to pause for a moment because out of respect of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, we don't want to use low terms. But out of explaining to you that he was involved in a lot of what today's misguided youth would actually be involved in. We would not be wrong to say that because he says it himself. He says that he was a womanizer and he was a, an alcoholic of note. He used to drink so much and he used to worship the idols just like everybody else did. So much so that he made his own idols and he worshipped them. That was the man. But the reason why I'm making mention of this is to show you and I, my brothers and sisters, that if Allah wills goodness and if you have goodness in your heart, no matter what you've done in the past and no matter what muck you might be in right now, there is always hope for you. This man was furthest away from the teachings of Islam. Something struck and immediately he turned to Islam. We will come to the exact details of what happened. This man hated Islam and the Muslims. When he heard of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had so much hatred that everyone who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke to, he would quietly go afterwards and tell them, watch out, you better not listen to this man. You watch out. He had a slave girl whom he used to harm from morning to evening solely because she accepted the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the man, the womanizer, the one who was an alcoholic known as Umar ibn al-Khattab. Where did the change come? How did it come? And why did it come? Inshallah, we will speak about that tomorrow. He is one of our heroes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the following of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu in his days of Islam. And may Allah unite us with him and with the others in paradise. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household and all his companions may Allah bless them and every single one of us I mean, my brothers and sisters, we started discussing the life of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And I made clear mention that this man was feared in Quraysh. And he was a young man at the age of 27 approximately when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had achieved nubuwa. And as we had heard, it was not befitting of us to make mention of the history of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu had he not mentioned it himself. And this was prior to him accepting Islam. He says he engaged in all the vices. He was a person, and as he has said himself, who worshipped idols that he carved with his own hands. And he was a person who was involved not only with alcohol, but even with women. And then as he grew up, he was well respected in Quraysh. Because he was a businessman, he used to travel a lot with his own caravans and with his own wealth up to the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula and coming down to the south as well. And he earned a lot of his wealth. So at a young age, not only was he wealthy and eloquent, 
but at the same time he was quite feared because of his power and might in Quraysh. And over and above that, he was a person whom Quraysh used to use to go to other parts of the peninsula whenever they needed to explain their position because of a difference that they may have had with the others. They used him as an ambassador. He was known as Safiru Quraysh, which means one of the spokespersons of Quraysh and an ambassador that they used to send to other regions or other parts of the peninsula. So this was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam presented Islam to the people of Mecca, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was one of those youth who used to constantly listen to the older people saying, we need to eradicate this man. We need to kill this man. We need to get rid of this man. This is what they used to say. So the young people used to all talk to each other. Who is going to do this? And each one would say, I will do it. This one would say, I would do it. But no one would actually end up doing it because they were upset that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling them that what your forefathers have been doing is wrong. And what I have come with is actually correct. Don't worship me, but worship my maker and yours who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they could not understand what is the catch. Normally Quraysh, those who grew up in that particular era, anyone who tried to say someone else was bad, it was because they had their own agenda. And in this particular case, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had no agenda of his own. Rather, he would call people to develop a link with their maker alone. And this was something unique. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, as much as he detested Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time, and he detested those who were believers, he used to go to everyone who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to speak to after he had left. And he would tell them, be careful, don't follow this, be careful, watch this man, don't listen to him. If you do, your life will be made difficult and I will be the first one who's going to sort you out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was an incident that occurred in Safa. Safa is where one of the mounts are, where we do the Sa'i. When we go for Umrah, we actually have the walking and the running between Safa and Marwa. So close to where Safa was, there was an incident that had occurred. And in fact, another incident that occurred, which is of importance and we will make mention of it today, was just near the Kaaba. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was praying, Abu Jahl came to him and struck him with, with uh, his stick or with part of his bow. And so what happened is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was hurt, but because he was just a man and Abu Jahl was a very strong leader of Quraysh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said nothing at the time. And here comes Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, who was the uncle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was out on a trip to hunt. And when he came back from his hunting trip, something strange happened. Someone told him, do you know your nephew was beaten up by Abu Jahl? So Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib got so angry and so upset. He went to beat up Abu Jahl and he told him, how dare you, how dare you speak to my nephew in these words when I too am amongst his followers. So this was a declaration of faith. No one before that knew that Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib was one of the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But at that stage, he became known as one of the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was related to Abu Jahl. Umar's mother and Abu Jahl were brothers and sisters, meaning that was his sister. So he was the uncle of Umar ibn al-Khattab. So he was very upset that my uncle was actually beaten by Hamza or he was disrespected by Hamza. And he said, as a result, I'm going to sort this man Muhammad out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So he decided, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu decided on that day that this is the day. He walked out with his sword and he was very angry. He was ferocious, vicious. He had a bad intention and he walked out. It was clear for all those who saw him. This man has intended something huge and big. He's angry, he's upset. So on the path, he met Nu'aym, Nu'aym ibn Abdullah. Nu'aym ibn Abdullah was a man. He did not say he 
was a Muslim. Later on, people found out he was a Muslim. He accepted Islam, but he was silent about it because he was worried and concerned about what the people would say or his family and so on. So he, he had actually later on made his Islam clear to the people, but not in the initial stages. So he saw Omar and he asked him, where are you going? Is everything okay? He says, today I'm going to execute Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm going to execute him. Now Nu'aym ibn Abdullah said, you know, you are a man, you are intelligent, you are a strong man, Quraysh respects you. Omar ibn al-Khattab said, I don't mind, I will execute him and I will hand myself over to his own clan and I will then be executed because as a result of him. I don't mind, but I will sort this problem out now because it has split Quraysh into two pieces and we don't like that. So Nu'aym ibn Abdullah tells him, you know what? You have a problem in your own family. Why don't you start with them? Your sister, Umm um Jamil. Now Umm Jamil, her name was Fatima bint al-Khattab. If you recall, we mentioned her two days ago. Umm Jamil, not the wife of Abu Lahab, but the daughter of al-Khattab, the sister of Umar. Her name was Fatima bint al-Khattab, also known as Umm Jamil bint al-Khattab. So Nu'aym says, why don't you deal with them? Your brother-in-law, Saeed ibn Zaid. He is a Muslim. They are openly Muslim. They follow Muhammad. They support Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go and deal with them. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu decides, okay, let me go and deal with them. So he diverted. And as he diverted, he walked through and he knocked on the door of his sister. At that time, there were three of them in the house. There was Fatima bint al-Khattab, his sister, his brother-in-law Saeed ibn Zaid, and a teacher who came to teach them Quran by the name of Khabbab ibn al-Arat. Khabbab ibn al-Arat radiallahu an, he brought with him some parchments and he was teaching them parts of the Quran. So as the door was knocked according to one of the narrations, Khabbab ibn al-Arat happened to hide and the parchments were actually hidden as well. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu flung the door open and walked in and started beating up his sister and brother-in-law. Now to pause for a moment, something had happened a little bit earlier. When the Muslims at that particular time were given permission to migrate, the first migration to Abyssinia, there were a few of them who started migrating. And at that time, there was the wife, one of the wives of one of the companions known as Amir ibn Rabi'a. She was about to leave for Abyssinia. And Umar ibn al-Khattab saw her and he was very angry at the time. But when he saw her, he felt pity in his heart. As strong as he was, as fearless as he was, as powerful as he was, as fierce as he was, he felt something in his heart seeing this lady go. And he told her, may Allah be with you. That was a statement before Islam. May Allah be with you. From this, the wife of this Sahabi, Amir ibn Rabi'a, she, she knew that this man has a soft spot. There is something in his heart. As powerful as he seems, there is a soft spot in his heart. So she told her husband that I have hope in this man. He perhaps will understand the truth. And his wife said, no ways. Uh, sorry, her husband said, no ways. It is impossible for Omar to accept Islam. And the wife says, don't say that. There is nothing impossible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us learn a lesson from this. Nothing is impossible. No matter where you have been and what you have done, Allah's mercy is near. No matter who has done what on a global level, if Allah wants, they will turn into the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always have hope and always make positive dua. Always have hope in the mercy of Allah. So Umar ibn al-Khattab, as he is beating up his sister and his brother-in-law, he, notice, he notices that she began to bleed. And when he saw the blood, that's when the soft spot was struck. The cord was struck and immediately he stopped because he realized this is my sister. What am I doing? You know, we share the parents. What am I doing with the sister of mine? And he said, look, what were you people doing here? So she said, we were reading the Quran. Where is it? I want to see it. So Khabbab ibn al-Arat had come out and they brought the parchment. They told him, if you would like to read this, you first need to wash yourself. So he washed himself in the ghusl that he had in whatever way he did wash himself and he came forth. Now he started reading and coincidentally, 
for him, but not coincidentally for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verses he read were the opening verses of Surah Taha, Surah Taha. And amazingly, he used to tell himself, the Muslims are very strong. No matter how much we persecute them, they're not quitting. That was something that used to impress him because he was a fearless man. When a man is fearless, he is always impressed by others who are fearless as well. To say these people are being persecuted, we're beating them, we are doing so much against them. There is a slave girl of my own, he used to tell himself, I persecute her from morning to evening, but she doesn't quit. And she says, no, I still say what Muhammad has brought is correct. He was amazed by it in a certain way. So he always used to say, but all these rules and regulations that have come, surely they are coming in order to govern our lives and we should be people who must do what we want. Take a look at the globe today. People teach us that you are the happiest person if you do as you please. But Islam says, no, you will be the happiest person if you do as your maker pleases or as it pleases your maker. So. This is why people are so depressed on the globe when they do as they please, they commit sin and they don't even realize there comes a time when they are depressed, they are upset, their families break and so on. Everything is in disarray, but that's because they have done as they were, as they pleased, but not as Allah would be pleased with. So here, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu reads the verses. Indeed, we have not revealed this Quran to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in order for it to be a source of distress for you. No, it is none but revelation from the most merciful. Allahu Akbar, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is, it is a reminder for those who fear Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that fear. May He grant us that humbleness and humility and that surrendering. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was drawn to tears. He read these verses and he was shocked. He was actually amazed. And he said, take me to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine all the hatred and all the enmity and all the evil that he was engaged in prior to this moment. Suddenly it came crashing to the ground and his heart was filled with instant love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Believe me, he is one of my heroes and I'm sure he is yours too. Subhanallah. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, one of the greatest of those to walk on this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was taken to the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to gather. 39 men had accepted Islam. He was the 40th, according to most of the narrations, he was the 40th man to accept Islam. So he walked into the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam and they allowed him to come in. One might ask, why did they just allow him to come in when he had his sword with him? And according to some narrations, there was a sign that he was, you know, just in a bit of a quarrel earlier on because of blood and what have you. They allowed him because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had made a dua that the companions were aware of. That dua was Allahumma a'izzal Islam bi ahad al umarain. Oh Allah, strengthen Islam through the acceptance of Islam by one of the two strong men, either Umar ibn al-Khattab or Amr ibn Hisham, who was known as Abu Jahl. And the Prophet ﷺ later says, in my heart, I always knew that Umar was a better option. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us goodness. So this goes to teach us again, remember to make good prayers for those who sometimes might do something bad. We have a weakness. Our own children, we curse them sometimes when they do something bad. It happens. It's the weakness of man. Don't ever do that. It's the moment of acceptance of prayer. Why don't you make a good prayer for your children? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, my child has disobeyed me. Oh Allah, bless the child. Make the child obedient to you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us with the best of children. I mean, so here Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu is faced with Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib who was at the door of Al-Arqam ibn Abil Arqam radiallahu anhu and 
he was walking in. So Hamza says, Oh Allah, this is Umar. In yuridillahu bihi khayran yuslim. If Allah intends goodness from this man, he will accept Islam. And oh Allah, if anything else is intended by this man, make it easy for us to overcome this man. وَإِن يَكُنْ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ يَكُنْ قَتْلُهُ عَلَيْنَا هَيِّنَا Oh Allah, make it easy for us to overpower and overcome this man if he intends any evil. So as he walks in, according to some narrations, he declared the faith. And according to some other narrations, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Umar, you are welcome. Enter the fold of Islam. And he says, Ya Rasulallah, inni ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu annaka abduhu wa rasooluhu. I bear witness, O oh Messenger, that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, our Maker. And I bear witness that you are indeed a Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that moment, there was a takbir that was heard, that was heard all the way to the Kaaba. So many people heard it in Mecca. It was an amazing takbir. And this was because the Sahaba was so happy because of what had happened to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us as well. The first thing that happened, he says, O Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are we not on the right path? Yes, we are. Well, what are we fearing for? Let us get up and go and pray at the Kaaba. Why must we do it in the house of Al-Arqam here? And he was a leader of Quraysh. And he says, one of the things that delayed him to accept Islam was the fact that he thought to himself, I'm a big ambassador of Quraysh. I'm a wealthy businessman. I have so much respect in Quraysh. If I accept Muhammad, I'm going to lose everything. And he says that actually kept him back. Otherwise, he would have been one of the first to accept Islam. But because of his top position and his wealth and he was fearing to lose so much, he said, no, let me not accept this man. However, this day of turning is so amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him in Islam more than he had prior to Islam in terms of his status and level and respect. Up to today when we say his name, we say radiyallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with him, Umar ibn al-Khattab. So he got up and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got up and they made two lines of people. Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib was the leader of one and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu was the leader of the other. 20 people on either side and they marched all the way to the Kaaba. And that was the first day that they congregated and they prayed right at the Kaaba and the people of Quraysh were gobsmacked. They did not know what to say. No words to utter. Why? Because Umar is with them. What should we do now? They're just watching. Strong man whom we had hoped that he would deal with the crisis became a part of the crisis according to Quraysh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us all. This was the power. Suhaib al-Rumi radiallahu anhu. He says, when Omar accepted Islam radiallahu anhu, that is when we became powerful. That is when the, the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was literally accepted. The strength was granted to Islam through the acceptance of Islam of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. We could sit in groups in public. We could tell people we were Muslim and no one dare lift a finger upon us. This was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Now, the day that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu migrated to Medina Munawwara, and this is one of our heroes we are talking about. He became an instant hero amongst the Muslimin. He defended them. No one dared take the name of a Muslim. When it was his time to go for hijrah to Medina Munawwara, he did not do what the others were doing. What was everyone doing? They were all quietly going. By night, they would go away because Quraysh and their relatives were persecuting them. They would go onto the road and path and take away whatever they had, beat them up some cases, bring them back in some cases, and do so much in terms of harm to them. So Umar ibn al-Khattab heard all this and he knew he had a big family and he knew Quraysh was large. He went to the Kaaba. According to one narration, he made his tawaf around the Kaaba and then he went onto the maqam and he called out very loudly. He says, Oh Quraysh, I am going out for hijrah. I am leaving to Medina Munawwara. Anyone has a problem with that? See me on the other side. See me on the other side of this valley. Anyone who wants their mother not to see them again. Anyone who wants their children to be orphaned. And anyone who wants their wives to become widows. See me on the other side. Try and mess with Umar ibn al-Khattab. Come see what happens. Nobody followed him. They saw him leave and he left with his group that he had. And nobody dared speak about Umar ibn al-Khattab. This was the man and this was the hero. When it comes to Sulh al-Hudaybiyah, 
When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had intended to make Umrah with his companions, the sixth year of Hijrah, and they went to Mecca. Just outside Mecca, they camped in the place known as Hudaybiyah. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was there. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions were denied entry into Mecca. They were told after the agreement that look, come back the following year. And the agreement was signed. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we intended Umrah and we should go in no matter what happens. Why should we agree to come back next year? We, I, I don't want to do this. I want to go in now. Let us go. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you know, I am a messenger of Allah. I've been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I told you we will go for Umrah, I did not say that it has to be this year. So we will come back next year. Anyway, he was quite upset in his heart. And as he walked away, he was upset up to the degree that revelation came down when Allah revealed the opening verses of Surah Al-Fatih. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. Indeed, we have granted you a clear victory, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and some of the companions asked, is this a victory? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, yes, it is. It is revelation from Allah. Then he was happy. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu later on says, that in my life, I engaged in so much of seeking forgiveness of Allah, so much of charity and so much of fasting. And I freed so many of the slaves because I feared the speech that I had on the day of Hudaybiyah must never be held against me. Subhanallah. Because obviously it hurt his heart. How could it have hurt his heart? It only hurt his heart for a good reason because he was a fearless man. He wanted to go in and he was saying, let's go. So this is why he says that I continue to do good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless every single one of us. I have already made mention of what happened at the time of the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I've already made mention of the fact that Umar ibn al-Khattab said, whoever says Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away, I will execute him. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu got up and he is the one who explained the truth. And this is when he calmed down. But one of the famous statements of this hero of ours, was دعني أضرب عنق هذا المنافق يا رسول الله. He used to say, "Oh messenger, let me slice the neck of this man." What that meant is, "Let me deal with this man, oh messenger." He was the one who always had his sword out. Anyone who did something wrong, he would say, "Oh messenger, let me deal with him." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would say, "Relax, relax, oh Ibn al-Khattab, take it easy. I have not been sent to be harsh. I have been sent as a mercy to mankind." May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless us. So this was the man at the time of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He was the first person who stretched his hand and said, Oh Abu Bakr, I am the one who pledges my allegiance to you. You are the most worthy of Khilafah and of being the leader and successor of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here is my hand. I pledge my allegiance and everyone followed Umar ibn al-Khattab. So much so that Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says that in my life as a Khalifa, I loved from amongst those who were on the earth, meaning obviously Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had passed away. But I love from amongst those on earth the most Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He is my helper and he is the one who has been with me all through my period that I have ruled. This was the statement of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu took the reins of leadership, I'm going to go through a list of what he did because he is our hero, really. He is a champion of note. We know of so many stories of his, I'm sure. But I want to mention what he achieved in the 10 years that he ruled. Remember, I told you he was 13 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approximately. And he ruled for 10 years. So he too was murdered when he was at the age of 63, approximately 62 to 63. Here is what he did. He was the person who started the use of the Hijri calendar. Today we have the calendar Hijra, 1435 Hijra. That was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He is the one who started that calendar off. And he said from now on the Muslims, whenever we talk about the years, we should relate them to the Hijra. And he made it compulsory. And that is what we are using to this day. He is the one who gathered the people in Taraweeh in Ramadan. So the Taraweeh we read today in a gathering of this nature 
Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was the one who started that off because before him they used to read in small groups and the smaller groups later on became larger groups. He said, let us read in one group in the masjid and inshallah we will follow one imam. Even though there were so many recited amongst them, but he put Ubay ibn Ka'b in the front radiallahu anhu and he said, we will all read behind you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. He was the first person who created a proper army an army that had a job and that was only to defend the Muslims. And he was the first person who had actually sent his army to the borders in order to protect them full time, the borders of the Muslim nation. And he was the first person who created the police department amongst the Muslims, where he had people who would walk around at night and he did too himself finding out what happened and maintaining law and order and seeing that everyone was okay. There are so many incidents. In fact, I can mention to you one very touching incident. One day, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu decided to walk through. He decided to walk through the gullies of Medina Munawwara at night. And he was followed by Talha radiallahu anhu. And he walked into one home quietly when no one was watching. And he came out after a little while and he went back. And he had a home that no one would distinguish because when he became the Khalif, he did not change his house. He remained where he was all along. So Talha radiallahu anhu decided to go the following day to that house to see who there was and what happened. And he found there was a very old blind woman there. So he asked her, who came to you last night and why did he come here? She said, I don't know. But it's a man who told me that he will come every so often. He brings me some foodstuffs and he cleans my whole house in a little while and then he goes back. Talha radiallahu anhu says, Subhanallah, this is Amirul Mu'mineen. This is the leader of the Mu'mineen. And he goes himself at night to clean the house of this blind woman and to bring her some food once in a while. This was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. The same man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, if Umar walks down a gully, Shaitan would never walk down the same gully. Shaitan would walk down the other gully. Because even Shaitan feared Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. This was a man, the hero. He was the first man who maintained the roads and built roads between cities and towns. He actually employed his men to service the cities by creating drainage and so many other facilities for the people of the cities and the towns. He was the man. He was the first man who developed what we know today as the registrar general. You know, everything is recorded, the births, the deaths and everything. Who is a civil servant? What do they get? And so on. Everything recorded. That was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He is the first man who decided that anyone who memorizes the Quran shall get an allowance from me, subhanallah, from Baytul Mal. You memorize the Quran, you deserve an allowance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Today, people who memorize the Quran, one wonders what is their standing. Because in so many countries, the Imam is the lowest paid in the whole community. May Allah protect us. Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab. He knew these are our leaders. They are holding within them the deen. Let them get a stipend from Baytul Mal al muslimin from the treasury of the Muslims. He was the one who developed the treasury of the Muslims in such a beautiful way. He had so much that he used to spend even on the Christians and the non-Muslims who were poor from the coffers of the Muslims. This is the man. He was the man who developed the system of taxing imported goods. When people brought goods from outside, he would tax it according to what he felt. A certain percentage or whatever it was, he was the man. He was a man who decided that the coins need to have specific weight and all the weights should be recorded. And when we are spending, we should have these gold and silver coins of specific weight and size. That was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He was a man who, who told his people never to destroy a place of worship that belongs to those who are non-Muslim. He was a man who was very kind to one and all. He was so just that he was known as Al-Faruq. Even prior to him becoming Khalifa, he was known as Al-Faruq, the one who distinguished. He was a just man. It is reported that one day a man came to him and told him, you know, uh, this man was supposed to be penalized because he was a thief. So he said, Oh, Amirul Mu'mineen, how can I be penalized for having been a thief? How can my hand be cut for having been a thief when it was predestined that I was supposed to steal? You see, that is a statement he was using against Umar ibn al-Khattab. So the man says, 
How can this happen? Umar ibn Khattab says, well, do you know what? It was predestined that you were going to be penalized as well. So here's the man, punish him. Allahu Akbar. So he was one ahead, always sharp. This was Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. There were so many other stories of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. He was a man who had surveyed the land. He measured it, everyone's land. And he literally what we have today as the surveyor general, he started it all off. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this great man. But there came a day, 10 years later, there came a day when there was one person who was disgruntled for some reason. His name was Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi. Abu Lu'lu was a man from the Persians. And what he did is, he stabbed Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu whilst he was leading Salatul Fajr towards the end of the 23rd year of Hijrah. He stabbed him six times and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu fell down. He was taken away and three days later he passed away. And that man who was known as Abu Lu'lu Fayruz al-Majusi, he killed Umar ibn al-Khattab by stabbing him and he stabbed several other companions who tried to catch him. Some of them were were killed instantly and at the same time Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu managed to get hold of him by throwing a like a sheet over him and when that happened this man committed suicide and died so to this day we do not know the exact motive behind the killing of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu but what we do know it was a Persian man known as Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu with the rank of martyrdom and may we be united with him. What a hero of Islam. What a great man. What a powerful man. Wallahi, we have only touched on his life but I call on you to go through the details of the life of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. You will find volumes and volumes. May Allah bless him and may Allah bless us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanaka اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك